Good morning and happy Sabbath. This morning I'm going to go ahead and do our announcements for the week. Let us all remember that we do have a midweek huddle every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. You want to come on out for your midweek blessing. This is where we get together and uh, study the word together just for about an hour. Pastor tries to make his way out here. I know it's kind of cold and winter and snow and ice, but let's try to get out here so that we can be blessed by some words, uh, biblical words uh, throughout the week. Uh, attention Goshen Youth and Youth at Heart for Youth Day, which is next Sabbath, December 15, we are planning a night of bowling and we would like for you all to participate. It will be next Saturday evening from 5 p.m. until, and we need a head count for the venue. So please see Brother Michael White or Julian Sims or, or myself for more information uh, today. Uh, we will be sponsoring families for the Angel Tree program this year. So for the past couple of years, we have been giving gifts uh, for the children whose parents are incarcerated, and we've been sponsoring many, many children. Uh, this year, we have over 70 children to sponsor, and we're asking that you sign up to sponsor gifts for these children. Uh, the gift needs to be a value in range of $20 per child. So if you want to get a couple of gifts, go ahead and, you know, add it up to about 20 bucks. Uh, and please sponsor as many children as you can. We need these gifts purchased and wrapped by next Sabbath, December the 15th. And during this time, we're going to have a special lunch for the families. They are invited to come out to church as well. Uh, and please see Sister Ramona Jones for a name. I'm not sure if we're all filled up. Are we filled up? We're not filled up, so we still have several more names to go. Pastor and I and our family are doing a family of four. So join us in trying to help these children for uh, this Christmas season. We're calling all Goshen members and friends, come and be blessed with the opportunity to dress for less on December 23rd at 4 p.m. That's a Sunday at 4 p.m. for a fashion show fundraiser for Goshen. That's going to be uh, an annual uh, fashion show that we have. Uh, we haven't had it for a few years, but we're bringing it back. So come on out on December 23rd at 4 p.m. for the fundraiser. Refreshments will be served. Please see Sister Edith Hawthorne or Dr. Tony Hayes for more information on tickets. So we're just asking, please get your tickets. This is a fundraiser. Uh, and please see our elder and Sister Hawthorne for more information. Uh, we have job and community resources. The Inglewood Community Service Center, located at 1140 West 79th Street, has many free workshops available on a variety of subjects. If you need information on emergency rental assistance, domestic violence advocacy, low-income energy assistance, SNAP or LINK benefits, employment, you name it, they've got uh, meetings and seminars for these things. So there's a number to call in your bulletin. We're trying to help people get employed and help people get as much help as they can. And during the holiday season, sometimes we need some extra help. So look to your bulletin for that information as well. Financial Peace University is almost done. And we have a class of almost 20 people who have uh, made some changes in how they're spending and how they are uh, dumping debt and trying to win in their finances. And uh, the last class will be tomorrow at, it's today? Oh, it's today and tomorrow. I think it's just tomorrow at five because we're gonna do the two classes in one, in one evening. So I think it's just tomorrow at 5 p.m., starting at 5 p.m. And again, if you haven't, come out it's okay because you could always get a little information come out and join us because uh, we all need a little help with our finances uh, every now and again but tomorrow at five o'clock here in the fellowship hall we do have our bridges crossing over grief our classes that are continuing every sabbath at 3 p.m meeting with uh, pastor casey adams in the 
um, conference room at 3 p.m., so just after lunch, come out and join us if you feel the need to just come and sit and listen or to share uh, feelings. Community service, please bring your gently used clothing and shoes for our next clothing drive. Uh, see Sister Ava Martinez for more information. And there's just so many things going on. Just look to your bulletin for um, the rest of the announcements. These are the regular things that we have going on. Our Monday prayer circle and loads of love, which is taking a break for the winter. Um, but please look to your bulletin for more information. Thank you and have a very happy Sabbath. Amen. And now, I'm going to do our invocation, so if you could please stand with me. It says in the word, Psalm 122, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you glad to be here this Sabbath morning? Because I certainly am glad to be here this Sabbath morning. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for bringing us here today. We ask for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit on us and on this service today. May you bless us with your presence, and may we give only to you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In the matchless name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated, if you can. Can you stand up on your feet and put your hands together? How many want to bless the Lord on this morning? Hallelujah! We create an atmosphere of praise. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell them to move. Move Holy Spirit in this way. Yeah. We create an atmosphere of praise. We create an atmosphere of praise. Atmosphere of praise. Move, move this Sing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Tell them to move, move this spirit in this place. Tell them to move. Say you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Tell them to move. move Tell him to bow. Sing, Lord, we love you. 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 Tell him to move. His spirit is displayed. Lord, we need you to move. You shall be healed. You shall be healed. You shall be filled. You shall be filled. You shall be changed. Your life, life rearranged. You shall be healed. You shall be healed. You shall be filled. You shall be filled. You shall be changed. You shall be changed. Your life, life rearranged. Sing hallelujah. 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 You say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our hearts cry hallelujah. Our hearts cry hallelujah. Put your hands together and give the 
God's glory. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Let the Holy Spirit move in this place. Amen. 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 My name is Lauren Burton, and I'm bringing your welcome today. Welcome to Goshen. Amen. Huh. Welcome to Goshen. Amen. Amen. Where the Spirit moves. Amen. Amen. And we're grateful. I want to share something with you as we start to uh, greet each other in a hug. So uh, this week, I think it was Thursday, Pastor called me and he's like, how you doing? I'm like, I'm all right. And I'm thinking, why did I say it like that to the pastor of this church? I'm all right. Mercy, mercy. And I thought about it. I'm like, Lauren, you got so much to be grateful for. So yeah, yesterday, yeah. yesterday, I was doing a little bit of cleaning in my home, and I came across a gratitude jar that was given to me in 2016. And it says, throughout the year, use a small piece of paper and write down blessings God has bestowed upon you. Mercy. Mercy. Then place them in the jar. We will get together at the end of the year and read the many blessings. So I said, let me open up and see what I put in here, 2016. And the first thing I pulled out, I didn't even remember this, was a ticket. And I had to remember, my goodness, what was this all about? So to make a long story short, I remember when I got the ticket, I actually ran a stop sign. And so I had to go downtown to the federal building woo, and take care of the ticket. So when I got there, I had to, you know, go to the front, let them know that I was there, and I sat down politely. The young lady who took my information immediately got up and came over to me. I sat in the back and she said, can I see you for a second? I said, sure. I went outside and she said, you are a child of God. It's written all over your face. I had to tell you that everything is going to be all right. <laughs> I said, my God. She said, everything is going to be all right. I walked up to the judge when he called my name. He looked at me and then he told me, have a seat right over there. So I sat in the front. Ten minutes later, he says, Miss Burton, you have been dismissed. Wow. Amen. It was a gratitude moment. Mercy. I want us to be grateful today, church. Mercy. I know it's a little chilly in here, a little chillier than normal, right. but I'm grateful to be here. You, Are you Jesus. grateful to be here? Amen. I remember when we were in a place that was not ours. This is ours. Amen. 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 All right, so I'm going to shout okay. Amen. and Hallelujah. be grateful today. So for on our viewing line, our audience online, this is my promise to our church and our viewers online. Next week, I'm going to have a gratitude jar for you, for you to be able to put all those things that you're grateful for that Amen. God has Amen. done Amen. for 2019 so you're ready. Amen? Amen. And if you decide to go on uh, Goshen Church, Dot com on Facebook or on the website and put in your inbox your name and address. I will mail one to you. God is too good for us to forget where our blessings came yeah. from and the blessings that he's given us. So Goshen, stand up, rise up, give someone a hug and Amen. let them know what you are grateful for. Amen. Welcome to Goshen, where the worshipers arise. Welcome to Goshen, let's lift the high. You are welcome in this place, come experience this grace. Welcome to Goshen, Goshen STA. 
Welcome to Goshen, where the worshipers arise. Welcome to Goshen, let's lift God high. You are welcome in this place. Come experience His grace. Welcome to Goshen. Welcome to Goshen. Welcome to Goshen. Welcome to Goshen. You are welcome. 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 Welcome to Goshen. Goshen at the end. You are welcome. 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 Welcome to Goshen, Goshen SDA. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loved the little children of the world. Sing it with us. Jesus loved the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loved the little children of the world. Jesus loved the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children. Where are my all little children? The children of the world. You're missing something. Red and yellow, black and white, all the precious are in his sight. Jesus loves the little children. If you have of the something world. for them, hold it high so they can Jesus see you. Jesus loves the little children. If you hold children, the children of the world. Deny them. Red and Denier. yellow, Denier. black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. All right, all right. Jesus loves the little children. Okay. All okay. the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white. All our precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Okay, okay. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Do we have other little children? Jesus loves the little children of the world. Okay, put it right here. Jesus loves the little children. Okay, come on, my little children. Come to Grandma Bracy. Where are my little children? Come to Grandma Bracy. Come on. I'll wait for you. Hi there. Come on and have a seat. Okay. Good morning, boys and girls. Yes. Again, I'm Sister Bracy, and today I will be telling you a true story. I will ask questions afterward. So put your thinking caps on, play close attention, because I will be asking questions. 
Now, the title of this story is Obedience is Better Than Sacrifice. Have you ever heard that statement before? Anybody ever heard it? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Well, this is a story, and you'll be able to share with your friends when you get to school tomorrow. Okay. I'm sorry. On Monday, had a senior moment. Anyway, meanwhile, back at the story. There was a little girl. She was approximately six years old. She lived in Mississippi, a little country town called Macon, Mississippi. It's very small. Anyway, she's from a very large family. And her mother, when she was real little, mother would tell the girls, she had a lot of sisters and a lot of brothers. Mom said, the girls are supposed to stay in the house and do chores, do housework, make pies and wash the clothing and stuff like that. And the boys are to go to the farm with father to help with the cows and feeding the cows and milking the cows and the hay and getting the, chick, the eggs from the chickens and all of that stuff. So in other words, girls stay in the house, boys do outside work. So the little girl decided, hmm, that's boring. I don't want to do that. So she decided to go out in the fields one day where dad and the boys were baling hay, and they were piling on a haystack light. So it had a pit for it. You know what a pit fork is? Yes. Okay. Some of you do, some of you don't. It's got like three little prongs. Some have four little prongs, and you stick it in. You, you pick up stuff, and you throw it on top. So they was picking up the hay that was cut. Right. Okay. It was picking up and putting it on top. Picking it up, put it on top, and making it a little mound, a little taller and taller, making a haystack. So when it was really small, she climbed up on top of it. And she was only six, so she was small. They kept putting it on, piling on. She's up, just jumping around, having a really good time, just jumping around, stomp, stomp, stomp. All of a sudden, she saw a spider. The spider was crawling in the hay and everything, and she's looking like, huh, huh. Then she started to scream. Nobody could hear her because she's up top now. And they're on the other side. It's gotten pretty big because they've been throwing hay there for a while. And there was a barbed wire fence alongside the haystack. She was backing away from the spider. She slipped off the haystack onto the barbed wire fence. It stuck in her leg. She was hanging upside down by the barbed wire fence that was in her leg. She's screaming and crying and hollering, but yet they couldn't hear her because they were on the other side of the haystack. So all of a sudden, somebody said, I hear something. So they go around to the other side where she was, and they lifted her off the fence. And as they lifted her, put her down on the ground, she looked and saw all this bright red blood running from her leg. And she's screaming and yelling and hollering. So they took her home to mother. And the boys were laughing. They said, ha, 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 you weren't supposed to be out here in the first place. You're supposed to be in the house. So they're telling mother, she should get a spanking because she was disobedient. She did not obey you. Because the mother talked to them several times about obedience. So she said, she looked at her little sad face and all the tears and the dress was torn too. And she said, no, I think she suffered enough. So was she obedient to what mom told her to do or was she disobedient? disobedient. Okay, so she did not obey. So she had to sacrifice, which means she got a scar that would last her for the rest of her life. And that little girl is me. That's the true story. It happened to me. One day in the summertime, remind me to show you my scar. So now who wants to pray for me? So listen to your parents and what the moral of the story is. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So by me not being obedient, I have to sacrifice. I have a scar that will last me till I die. So come pray with me. Can I get a female too? Come on. Don't let the boys outdo you. Come on, girl. Denia. Do I have to call you by name? You know how to pray. Come on. Okay. Girls first. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for bringing us to church, Lord Jesus. Help us to go back home safely. 
Help us to follow your word and do whatever you tell us to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for bringing everybody to church safely. And thank you for bringing them to their destination. Help the people that sit homeless and the people that's in the hospital. And help the people that's not here come home next Saturday. And we know you're our God, and you know, we know you love we, you love us, and we love you too. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Wow. Goshen got some praying children. Go tell somebody. Happy Sabbath once again, Goshen. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to our viewing audience. This is a time where we all get to participate. I'm getting ready to call you to worship. But when I think about my week, I had a good week, pretty decent week. I finished one college today. We uh, This week we had um, our final exam on this past Thursday. So I praise God for that. But I had a student in that class that, he was a good student, but he always had extra questions for me about life, about what to do in life and, and how he should, uh, should he change his major? Where should he go from there? And you know, I'm, I'm not a counselor usually, uh, but I took it upon myself to pray with him. And we asked God's guidance in his life. Now this is Indiana University of South Bend and this is not an Adventist school or a Christian per se school where teachers should be praying with students. But he recognized something in me throughout the semester and he asked that we sit down and talk and in that discussion I just felt the need to pray for him. And so he appreciated the prayer and he got my Snapchat information and he'd like to stay in contact. And while I, that's all good and well, I thought about it. You know, sometimes because this is a, a public university, I can't really show that, you know, Christianity like I would like to or talk about the love of Jesus. But because they could see it, Hallelujah. because they could feel it, Hallelujah because I exude love to my students, they felt like, boy, she must know something. She must know somebody. Do you know that somebody? Do you know that somebody? We are so thankful and so glad to have that somebody in our lives. So I'm gonna call you to worship. I know the first song they're gonna sing is, I am a friend of God. Are you a friend of God? Because I'm a friend of God. So please stand with us as we sing our morning worship songs. I am a friend of God. Amen. 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 Come on, can you just begin to clap your hands in the house? Yeah. Oh, come on, go to so let's raise it together. Who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me, how you love me? It's amazing, say who am I that? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Say that you hear me. That you hear me. When I call. When I call. Come on, lift your voice. Say, is it true? Is it true that you are thinking of me? Sing how you love me. How you love me. It's amazing. It's amazing. Come on, clap your hands. Sing, I am. I am a friend of God. If you believe it, raise your voice and say, Sing, I am a friend of God. He calls me great. Sing it again. Say, I am a, I am a friend of God. Let's take a set of time. Take a who am 
Think about it. We call him God Almighty, Lord of glory. You have called me friend. Come on, can you lift your hands and sing it to him? Sing God Almighty. God Almighty. We call him the Lord of glory. Lord of glory. Yet somehow he calls me friend. You have called me friend. right here and begin to magnify the king. Tell him how much he means to you on this morning. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you can't make it without him. He's an everlasting father. There's nobody like our God. Father, we reverence you, Lord God. We give our worship unto you, Lord God, because you deserve it, Lord. You're deserving of all our praise, all our honor, and all our glory, Lord God. We love you, Jesus, on today, Lord God. We love you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yes, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 
my hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah, my hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Say my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Say my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs. To you, no matter what I'm feeling, my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs hey, to hey, you. Say my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. With one big voice, can we lift it up right here? So you deserve, you deserve it. it. You deserve. Give it all up to you, Lord, yeah. All of the glory belongs to you. I pour my heart out onto you, Jesus. All of the glory, all of the glory belongs to you. There is nobody like you, Father. All of the glory yeah. belongs to you. Say so you deserve it. You deserve it. Say you deserve it. You deserve it. We give it all up to you, Lord. We love you, King. Say you deserve it. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. to do, but to say me, Lord, say, Lord, I love you, say, Lord, I love you, say, Lord, I adore you, Lord, I adore you, because you got our body, because you first love me, say, Lord, I adore you, say, Lord, I adore you, say, Lord, I adore you, you deserve it, you Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, one boy say, you deserve you it. Deserve it. You, deserve you deserve it. You deserve it. God, you never left. You us deserve to it. You kept our minds you in perfect peace, Lord. Hallelujah. You deserve it. Say, you deserve it. Say you deserve it. Can we all lift it up together? You deserve it. Say you deserve it. All that I have to give to you, yeah. You deserve it. Now can we just worship our King right here? Take a moment out and tell Him how much He means to you. Father, you deserve all of our glory. If you never do anything else, you're still Jehovah. You're still God Almighty. And there's no one greater than you, King. You go before us, Father. And you make every crooked way straight, Father. You make everything perfect in our lives, Jesus. We lift you up on today, Father. Because you're great and you're awesome. There's nobody greater than you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, King. There's no one greater than you. Last time, say, you deserve it. Say you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Yes, Lord. We've Thank come you. to the most pivotal, pivotal part of our worship experience. Yes, Lord. Where we get to speak to a God who deserves all glory. All honor, yes. Yes. all praise, not because of what he's done for you, not because of what he's doing, not because of what he will do, but just because of who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what kind of week you've had. I had a call last night my, from my father was in, didn't sound right. He said, I'm in the hospital. My God. I said, you're in the hospital? Why are you in the hospital? He says, I, I, I don't know. He says, I'm here and I don't feel good. And at that moment, I began to call on the name of Jesus. Yes. I don't know what it is about when you call on the name of Jesus, but there is power. Yes, it is. When yes, it, it is. leaves your mouth and reaches to the mercy seat, there's something about when you call on the name of Jesus. I don't know what your circumstances is this morning. But if you need a special touch from the Lord, I invite you to come down and come and pray with us. If you need to pray for someone, Jesus, I invite you to come down to the altar. If you need to Jesus, pray for yourself, come on down to the altar. Jesus, if you need some prayer in your finances, come on down to the altar. If you need prayer on your job, come on down to the altar. Something happens when the name of Jesus is called by his children. Wherever you are, whether you're home or whether you're here, I invite you to bow your heads as we pray. Father in heaven, we just want to acknowledge you as the Lord and Savior that you are. The creator of all things. God, we're crying out to you today. Acknowledging that you are the head of our lives. Yes. That you are the one that orchestrates every movement, every thing that goes on is under your control. And God, we give you thanks and praise yes, for having everything under control. Thank you. When we can't control it, we know that you have control. When we can't see, when we can't touch, when we can't do for ourselves, you are there, oh God orchestrating, moving, and 
shaping and making things. Father God, somebody right now in the name of Jesus needs to be healed in their body. Lord, we're calling on you right now to be a healer. Touch every infirmity. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your will be done. Under the, everyone under the sound of my voice, whoever is hurting, whoever has pain in their body, I am calling on the name of Jesus to come in like a mighty rushing wind right now in this place. Show up and show out, oh God. There's somebody that's having trouble in their home, whether it be finances, marriage, children. We're asking you, oh God, to be the peace that passes all understanding. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, bring back that wayward child. Lord, fix that broken home. Lord, mend broken finances. In the name of Jesus. There's someone right now, oh God, that is moving farther and farther away from you. I don't know what the circumstances may be. But Lord, like a loving father, I ask you, oh God, to stretch out your hand and bring them back home. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless this house. Lord, we all feel a little chill in the house. But help us to feel the warmth of your embrace in this place. This is your house. We ask, oh God, that every person, everyone that comes to this place is blessed by your presence, by the love that they feel by each and every person that is represented here. May those that come here be transformed by your power. Lord, bless the staff here, oh God. Bless your man's servant as he ministers today. Bless his family. Bless the leaders of this church. Bless the members of this church. Bless the visitors. We pray, O oh God, that this house will be a lighthouse in a dark place so that others may come to know Jesus. And as we end this prayer, O oh God, we pray that each of us would be saved in your kingdom. Forgive us of our many sins, O oh God. We're not perfect, but Lord, we're calling on you to help us on our journey. Walk with us, talk with us, show us which way we should go. And God, we will be forever grateful for what you've done for us, and we will be obedient and following your way. We thank you for this moment, and we thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. This we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Somebody say hallelujah in the room. I like this section. Hallelujah. It's okay. I love y'all too. <laughs> so one thing I love about the Lord, and I say this a lot, <laughs> but he's consistent. He's faithful, and he doesn't change. And I know all of us, we all go through things. We all have difficulties. We all have challenges. But one thing that I've experienced in my life, it doesn't matter what I face, when I go to the Lord and I take my hands off of it and I allow him to be God, things begin to change. Why? Because he's the one who holds the world in his hand. 
A lot of people, they say he holds the whole world in his hands, but I like to say just his hand because as big as our world is, it only takes him one hand to hold it up. <laughs> and what I'm grateful is that, why I'm grateful is that every time I face something, he pulls me through. He pulls me out. He, he continues to save me and redeem me and sanctify me and heal me and refill me and restore. He does it every time and he does it over and over again and he never fails at doing it and he's always consistent with it. Is there anybody else's testimony in here? Or is it just me? Yeah. All right. So if it's your testimony, can you just lift your hands and begin to let thanksgiving flow out of your mouth and tell God thank you just for being consistent. Father, in this moment, we take just a 30-minute segment just to lift our hands and worship you and offer you our thanksgiving for being consistent, for being the one who pulls us through, Father, for being the one who redeems us, for being the one who restores us, for being the one who consistently heals us, God, for being the one who hears us when we cry, for being the one who, who never turns a deaf ear to us, God, for being the one who is always there standing right next to us. God, for being the God that goes before us while also being the God that stands behind us, God. For God, being the one who heals us and keeps us on the left and keeps us on the right, Father. For being the one who's the father to the fatherless. For being the one who's the mother to the motherless, Father. Just for being who you are, God. For knowing us and, and, and creating us and never leaving us to stumble and fall, God. For always being the one who picks us up when we feel like we can't make it, God. So we lift our hands and we offer you our thanksgiving this morning morning God we don't take it lightly that you are there for us we don't take it lightly that you are always here with us God so we lift our hands and we allow thanksgiving to flow out of our mouths God because from the depths of our hearts and from the depths of our soul we are truly grateful because we know if it had not been for you who was on our side the enemy would have swallowed us up whole God but we know that even when our enemies came to eat us up and to get to devour us your spirit lifted up a standard against them God for being the one who was our light and our salvation for being the one who knows us and has a plan for us that uh, makes us prosper God that makes us always win and we because we are always victorious we lift our voices and we lift our hands to you and we give you our praise and we give you our glory and we give you our honor that can you just lift your voice in the room and give them glory we bless your name Jesus we bless your name oh God yeah Yeah, we love you, Lord. Yeah, the song goes like this. <laughs> through all I have come through, Lord, it was you. Yeah, through all I have gone through. Lord, it was you, yeah, 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 it was you, it was you, pulling me through, yes, Lord, it was you, Lord, it was you, pulling me through, Come on, can we raise that together? It's real easy. Sing through all. Through all. Sing I, I have gone through. I have gone through. Lord, it was you. Lord, it was you. Come on, we're going to say it again. Say through all. Through I have gone through. I have gone through. Lord, it was you. Lord, love. it was you. You did it every time, over and over. It was you. It was you. It was you. It was you. So pulling me through. Pulling me through. Come on, if you're grateful, can you just tell them thank you in the room? Lord, it was you. It was you. I know it was you. Lord, it was you. Pulling me Pulling me through. Pulling me through. Are you 
grateful for it today. Saying it was you, Lord, it was you, Lord, it was you pulling me through. Yeah, say it every time I stumble, when I stumble, even when I cried all night long. Away. And you were right here, yeah. you were right, right here, here to stay. Right here to stay. Sing it, it was you. Sing it, Lord, it was you. Lord, it was you. Listen, here's the thing. He'll never walk out on you. <laughs> no, never. No, never. Anybody glad about that, that he's going to stay right here? Listen, he'll never walk out on you. <laughs> no, never. No, never. Come on, why don't you just encourage yourself saying, he'll never. He'll never walk out on you. Sing, no, never. No, never. No, never. No, never. Come on, encourage your brother and your sister and look at them and say, he'll never say, he'll never walk out on you. Sing, no, never. No, never. Sing, no, never. No, never. Come on, we overcome by the blood of the what, lamb of the word of our testimony. Sing, he'll never. He'll never walk out on Come on, you. encourage somebody. Sing, no, never. No, never. No, never. No, no never. One more time, say, he'll never. Singing no never, no never, no never, no never, no never. Take it up and say, I know he'll never, he'll never walk out on me. Singing no never, no never, no never, no never. I know for a fact my God will never know, he'll never walk out on me. Singing no never, no never. begin to worship the Lord because you know he's going to be right there by you. Sing it again. Say you never he'll never walk out on you. Because the Bible says when mother and father forsake, forsake you, the spirit of the Lord will take you up and make him make you his own. So let's say it again. Say you never he'll never walk out on because you. Because sometimes you'll have friends who'll walk out on you because of your situations and your circumstances. But what a friend we have in Jesus. Lift your voice and cry out we'll never He'll never walk out on you. Sing no never. No never. No never. No never. Come on, church, raise your voice and encourage yourself or somebody else. He'll never. He'll never walk out on you. Sing no never. No never. Oh, no never. No never. He's the best friend. He'll never. He'll never walk out on you. Sing no never. No never. Come on, if you believe it, one more time, lift your hands and worship the Father. Come on and give him glory in the room. Come on, we bless your name, God. 
We thank you for being there. Thank you for being there. Thank you for being there. Thank you for always being there. I may not have been able to sense you. I may not have been able to feel you. But you were there for me, God. You were there for me, God. Oh, yeah. When I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the roll. Thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my high soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great!
Consecrate me now in thy service, Lord, by the power of your grace divine. Let our souls look up with a steadfast hope and our will be lost in thine. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you would turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 121, we will discuss this morning on the topic, Cover Me in 2019. If you have it, say amen. If you do have it, I invite you to stand as we read God's word. The book of Psalms 121, we'll be reading verses 1 through 8. And it reads, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Last verse reads, The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Invite you to be seated as we discuss Cover Me in 2019. Typically, this time of year, we prepare for the holidays, good food, lots of presents. But during this time of year, we tend to start working on what we call a New Year's. Resolution. You know, the one that you start on January 1st and the one that ends usually around January 11th. So as we prepare for a new year, I thought it fitting that we start to discuss what shall we do for 2019. You know, you can tell a lot about a person by where he or she looks for help in the time of trouble. When Moses was concerned at the Red Sea, he did not call for an army. He called on God. When Joshua went up against the city of Jericho, he did not use bombs, but he called on God. When the three Hebrew boys were facing a fiery death, they did not call a fireman. They called on God. When Daniel was about to become the main course in the lion's den, he did not call animal control. He called on God. When Esther was faced with seeing her people destroyed because of prejudice, she did not call the ACLU. She called on God. When Nehemiah saw the city of Jerusalem destroyed and in ruins, he did not call the city planners. He called on God. When Peter started to sink after walking on the water, he did not call the Coast Guard. He called on God. And when 
my soul was lost, sinking in sin. When I was dying and headed down a path of destruction, I did not look to Capitol Hill. I looked to Calvary's Hill, and I called on God. As we prepare for our journey in 2019, when you are in trouble, first things first, don't look around you. Don't rely on your peers first. Don't just rely on the pills the doctors prescribe for you. Don't only rely on the psychiatrists. Secondly, don't look beneath you. Blaming Satan solves nothing. Blaming Satan only gives him evidence that his schemes are working. Don't just look within you. The humanist says that man has the answer to all of his own problems. But we cannot trust ourselves in times of trouble, for we should have no confidence in the flesh. Fourthly, don't look behind you. Reliving the past or living in the past and its failures will only depress you. Look above you and you will be able to see that you are covered by the blood of Jesus. What do you say? David, the psalmist, understood this. And he wrote in Psalms 9, verses 9, The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in the time of trouble. Psalms 10, verse 14 says, But you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take it in hand. The victims commit themselves to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Psalms 32 verse 7 says, You are my hiding place. Have you ever needed to be hidden? You will protect me from trouble and surround me with the songs of deliverance. Psalms 34 verses 15 says, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. Psalms 34 verse 19 says, The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers them from them all. Psalms 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. That means that no matter where you are in trouble, the Lord is consistently working on your behalf. Our text this morning tells us that our help and our covering is from on high. It tells us a few things. The first thing it tells us is the source of our help. Secondly, it tells us the strength of our help. And lastly, it tells us the scope of our help. The, the source of our help, Psalms 112 verses 1 and 2, or 121 I should say, says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Our greatest help comes from the Lord. There are times when nobody else can help us but God. A friend suggested to me once, whenever you have a problem, before you talk to me, talk to Jesus first. When young David stood before Goliath, he didn't call on his friends for help. He called on the Lord. He put his trust in the Lord. My question to you this morning 
is when you're in trouble, who do you call first? Some of y'all call your mamas. Some of you call your fathers. Some of you call your spouse or your children. But do you call on the name of the Lord? When the people threatened to throw Daniel in the lion's den, he didn't call for human help. He called out to God in prayer. And what did God do? He shut the mouths of the lions. My question this morning is, are there lions in your life that are set out to destroy you? Seek God and every devouring mouth will be subdued by the power of God. Let's talk about the strength of our help. In the book of Psalms it says, He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Physical strength is one thing, but spiritual strength is an entirely different matter. No human can touch our all-powerful creator when it comes to strength. God simply spoke and the stars were created in the universe. You talk about a display of strength. See, when we try to picture creation, we just see a masterful artist creating and painting. But when we really look at creation. God spoke and things happened. My question to you this morning is, do you have enough faith in God to allow him to speak over your life and allow things to happen? Y'all real quiet this morning. Do you have enough faith in God to leave things at his feet and allow him to simply speak a word over your life and allow things to happen? God not only demonstrates his strength in the universe, but also in our lives. He will not allow your foot to slip. We as human beings will slip. We will fall. We will fail. We will make mistakes. Anybody been there? We will blow it. We will sin. But the scripture reads, he will not let your foot slip. The book of Matthew chapter 14 dis displays this exact phenomenon. The book of Matthew speaks of the story of Peter. As long as Peter had his eye on Jesus while he was walking on the water, he was safe. He would not slip into the water. But when Peter saw the wind, when he looked back, when he took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink. My question to you this morning, how many times in a day do we take our eyes off Jesus? Every time we take our eyes off of Jesus, we begin to slip. In 2019, we cannot afford to take our eyes off Jesus. If we want to be successful, if we want to move forward and begin to experience God's will for our lives, we must keep our eyes on who? Jesus. Anytime we take our eyes off of the Lord and put them on the circumstances around us, we are going to slip. Stop worrying. Pray. Yeah. Yeah. Seek God. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And you will not slip. The Lord will not let us slip as long as we are watching him and keeping our eyes on him. Now how do we keep our eyes on him? First things first, we need to study his word. 
Sing songs of praise. Pray. Worship his majesty. Listen to his heart and behold his beauty. Be assured that he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you does not sleep. So while you're resting, while you're sleeping, he is watching over you. Aren't you glad that you have 24-7 security? I don't care what ADT does. I have security that neither slumbers nor sleeps. He doesn't need a night watchman. He doesn't need someone to take over his shift. For the Lord God that we serve neither slumbers nor sleeps. He's better than the Secret Service. He has more connections than the FBI, and he has more intelligence than the CIA. So now we deal with the scope of our help. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. The scope of our coverage from on high is great. The scope of our help and the extent of our help from the Lord is past our understanding. God does not put a limit on how much he will help us in life. He continues to pour out on us all of his goodness. That, that should be good news for somebody. See, that, see, I didn't say great, but you know, the Bible stops at the word good. Remember back with me in the book of Genesis. He created this, he created that, and what did he say? It was good. And so he wants to share his goodness on us. Isn't that great news? The verse continues and says, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. These words may suggest God's provision. He will provide shade for us. And, and I'm from Florida. I got some Florida friends here. There's nothing better than some shade in the time of heat. Is there any witness? Now, I know that we are in the winter. And shade is not probably what you want to be under right now. Some heat would be great. I hear some witnesses over there. Uh, yeah, there's some heat would be great. But God said, I will be your shade. I will be your protection. And understand the context of what God is saying here. In those days, people were in the desert. And if you were exposed in the heat, you would die. And what God says is, where there is no tree, I will be your protection. I will be your shade. So let's translate that today. Where there seems to be no help for you, God says, I will make a way out of no way. When you're trying to figure it out, he's already worked it out. God says your math is nothing compared to what I can do. Because when you add one plus one, it will still equal me. It is our responsibility as created creatures to give to God and render to him that which he can take care of. Is there any witnesses in the house? God says, I can take care of you better than you can take care of yourself. Proverbs th chapter 3 tells us, honor the Lord with your wealth, then your barns will be filled to overflowing. Matthew 6 tells us, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all, 
These things will be given unto you. Don't you want all these things? God says, I can give to you what you cannot give to yourself. Don't walk into 2019 thinking that Powerball is going to solve your problems. Don't walk into 2019 and think that your, your, your stocks and your bonds and your savings is going to provide for you. Don't think that all the work that you're doing and the paychecks you receive is enough to provide for you. God says, I gave you the job. And just like I'm providing for you with the job, I can still provide for you without the job. Yeah. Word of God says your bread and your water will be what? Are any of y'all hungry? Any of y'all thirsty? Lord says you will drink from a well that shall never go dry. You know, that's one thing I love about Jesus. Every time he talks about something, he's always making it so that it's replenishable. But it's not replenishable on its own. It's replenishable because God himself says, I am your provision. Where does he tell us that? In the book of Philippians, it tells us very well where that comes from. It says, and my God will supply some, a few, all of your needs according to his riches, not yours. If God was going to bless you according to what you have, what would you have? He says, I will supply everything you need according to what I got. What if a bank called you and said, I'm going to supply everything you need based upon what we have in our reserves? Or oh, y'all be shouting, flipping, going all over pews, coming to testify on Wednesday night to tell about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you. So your soul is crying out. But here we have in the word of God telling us that every need that you have, God will supply it according to what he has in his storehouse. I wish somebody would get excited about that this morning. Not according to what you have. And here's the thing. Here is the thing. The problem that we have in our Christianity is that we try to limit God. What we try to do is comprehend what he has. If we look in the word of God, God says, I have cattle on a thousand hills. You have been interpreting that scripture wrong. See, you've been looking at the cattle, and you've just been looking at a bunch of hills and cattle on one hill. You've been interpreting that scripture wrong. He says, I have cattle on a thousand hills. That means that every hill is full. Every hill. And if he has that, Imagine how much more he has for you. Put your trust in Jesus, for he will provide what you need. Now, check what the scripture says. This is where we fall. He says, I will supply your what? Every what? Not every want.
See, we want things, and then God doesn't give it to us, and then we get mad with God, and then we stop coming to church because I've wanted this and wanted that, and I haven't gotten it. God, I've wanted this man forever and ever and ever, and you ain't still provided it for me yet. He said, that's not what you need. What you need is me. But God, that house, you said it was mine. No, you said it was yours. God says, I will supply your need. Now, he does supply our wants according to his will. But he says, at the very minimum, your needs will be covered by me. So stop getting mad with God when your wants are not fulfilled. Oh, it's real quiet, so y'all listening. Y'all must be listening. Let God handle what he needs to handle. The problem, and I preached this before, the problem is we get in our own way. We tell God how to be God. then we make decisions on behalf of God and then when things go wrong, we blame God. Now you've made yourself a God and the God of the universe is now warring with you because you've now made yourself an idol. You need to let God be God. Let him be your God and not your supervisor. You, you know the most ridiculous bumper sticker I've ever seen? God is my co-pilot. Few issues with that bumper sticker. God is my co-pilot. That means that I was here first. And he is my co-pilot. That means that I'm in charge until I willingly give it up to him and let him do his thing when it's his turn. You ain't the pilot at all. Matter of fact, you're not even in the cockpit. Matter of fact, you don't even know the destination. You don't even have the directions. You don't even know how to work the controls. You have not even gone for training. You don't even have the uniform. What you showing up for work for? God is my co-pilot. Well, that's why the car gonna crash. I'm sorry, I tell it like it is. I'm so sorry. Because when you think you're in control, God would allow you to have that control and allow you to go down the road of destruction you're set up for yourself. Who is con in control of your life? A lot of people have had problems in 2018. Why? Because you have decided to run the show. You are not in charge. Period. And you know that hurts because we're used to it. We're used to having everything under our control. Well, I'm going to do this, that, this day and that day. God says your plans are hilarious. Your plans are are hilarious because when you're too busy setting up to buy this apartment, God says, I've had the keys to your house, but you don't want them because you've set up in yourself to do what it is you want to do with no consultation because you yourself have made yourself the pilot and me the co-pilot. So God said, go ahead and rock this thing since you got it. You know what you're doing. Go on ahead and handle it. You know, I just only hold the world in my hands. No problem. You can handle this itty-bitty problem. 
and then we come to church. Pastor, pray for me. Go up to the saints. Oh, pray for me. I'm going through. You're not going through. You're running on empty. You're stuck on the side of the road because you didn't know where you were going and there's no gas stations in that destination. Are you going to allow, in 2019, God to control every aspect of your life? Because the war you're having is not with Satan, it's with God. Stop blaming Satan for everything. Most of the time it's you. Oh, Satan will give you a little nudge here and a little nudge there. But it's you that has to make the decision. The most powerful thing God has ever given to human beings is the power of choice. Why did he give us so much power? He gave us so much power and control so that we would choose him. Isn't that amazing? He doesn't want us to worship him or serve him or allow him to run things in a way that we are forced to. He wants sacrificial worship. He wants us to choose him by choice, by through our experience and not by force. So since we have this choice, what is your choice? I'm getting ready to close. What is your choice? Who do you choose? You or him? Because you're going to have to choose. You're going to have to make your choice. We are embarking on a new paradigm in this country, in this city, in this church. Well, who are you going to give control to? We already see what Satan can do on a worldwide scale. Imagine what will happen if we choose to war with God, allow Satan to nudge us in the wrong place, and not get to our selected destination. I want to go to heaven. I'm tired of rent, insurance, Gas, car, light, water, air. Got to buy a new iPhone every year. I'm tired of all of that. <laughs> tired of all of that. Aren't you tired? Sickness, disease, doctor visits, hospital visits, pain in your bodies, cricks and nicks in places you didn't even know existed. You ever wake up in the morning, you feel that creak? Where'd that come from? I'm young and I'm feeling that. <laughs> Messing around playing volleyball yesterday. I don't know what I was doing. Felt pain in places I didn't know existed. But aren't you tired of the same old, same old? Aren't you ready for Jesus to come? I'm ready for him to come. But my question is, if he came today, would you be ready? Would you have surrendered all to him? Here's a better question. Would he recognize you? Would he recognize you? Would he recognize your voice? Would he recognize you based upon your relationship? 
Or would he recognize you because you waited until the last minute? I never wanted to be that dying thief on the cross who spent his life and wasted his life on whatever criminal activity he was doing to land him on a cross. But you know what? I'm glad for the saving grace of Jesus that while I was yet sitting, while I was living in foolishness, while I was doing what I wasn't supposed to do, being with people I wasn't supposed to be with, he still saw it fit to save me. Are you willing to relinquish your control? Y'all see me, y'all see me up here, and y'all, why he always so passionate? I don't have a choice. Let me give y'all a disclaimer. I don't have a choice. Because I've been charged with telling a dying world that Jesus is coming back again. And if we don't get it right, we will miss it. God said he willed that no one would perish. Were you willing to relinquish your control into the willing and capable hands of Jesus? And it could be little things. I'm not just speaking to the people who got big sins. Matter of fact, sins are on a level playing field. We all got something. Don't get all high and religious and Christian. We all got something. Somebody's always angry. Somebody lies from time to time. Somebody don't know how to smile. Somebody has backbiting problems. Somebody's gluttonous. Somebody loves money too much. Some people love things too much. And one of the reasons why we suffer so much in this life is that we put things before God. Oh, no, you I got to eat. I can't go to church. Uh-uh. You ate too long in there. I can't. Mm -mm. That's going to mess with my whole dietary situation. I need to eat. Oh, so your food is more important than God. That's all right. Oh, no, I can't go to outreach. No, I can't do that. Mm -mm. Right, we going out in them areas, and, you know, my car is too nice for all of that. Oh, no, no, I can't do, I can't do that for God right now. Mm -mm. My, my schedule is too busy. You know, I got to go shopping, and then I got to get my nails done, get my hair done, everything did, and all of that. And I, I can't handle that. Does that sound familiar? God is looking for people who are getting ready to go. Are you getting ready? First step is giving it all to him. So if that's you this morning and you just need a little help, go on ahead and stand. You need a little help relinquishing what you have and all that control that you want and been putting God in the co-pilot seat, go on ahead and stand. I'm already standing, so I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm out here. Because there's certain things I like. If you ask my wife, I, I like things a certain way, and it has to go this way, and if it don't go that way, I got problems and issues, and I got concerns. I'm very... But I need to let that go. Anybody else? There's some of you that, that need to let something go. I don't know what it is. It's besides control, you need to let something go. Go on ahead and stand. And if you're standing, come on to the altar. There's, there's no shame in it. We all got issues. Come on. If you're standing, come on to the altar. We're going to pray together. Because I want to see each and every one of you in the kingdom. Don't let you stop you from getting to the kingdom.
You can't blame Satan. He ain't got nothing to do with it. Here's, here's the thing. Let me tell you about Satan. Because I come from a West Indian household. Everything, oh, it's the devil. Everything the devil. Let me tell you something about the devil. He's already defeated. So there's no blaming Satan. He's already a defeated foe. So now the choice is up to you. Are you going to relinquish you, your wants, your cares, your concerns, your plans to God? Now, if you got a child or a family member that still hasn't come on in, and you want to lift them up, come on and pray for them. We're not leaving anybody behind. Nobody. If I'm going, you're going to go with me. If it kills me, you go going with me. That's the attitude we need to take. You want to reach people? You want to get people to come to church? You want to get people to, to find you? Whatever it takes, you're coming with me. If I got to hold your hand, you're coming with me. Because the word of God says there will not be a starless crowd. You better take somebody with you. We are called as people of God to reach somebody. Reach some. I don't care. I'm not talking about tracks. I'm not talking about literature evangelism. You know what I'm talking about? A smile. A hug. A prayer. Hold somebody's hand. Tell somebody that Jesus loves you. Tell somebody, I love you and mean it. That is what we're called to do. Stop thinking that evangelism is, is bottled up into just a few procedures we do as an Adventist. That's not evangelism. Evangelizing people is reaching those that nobody else would touch. We are called. If that's your commitment, if you're sitting, I, I invite you to stand. If you're just willing to just reach out to somebody, touch somebody, tell them something, call them, reach out to them, keep encouraging them. If that's what you want to do, if that's all that you can do, let God use you. Let him use you. Not my will, but thy will be done. I don't want anybody lost. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we, we want to thank you for the open invitation you have expressed to us through your word. That you would provide and take care of our needs according to your riches and glory. We pray in the name of Jesus that we would relinquish our control unto you that we would relinquish our plans unto you, that we would relinqu relinquish anything that separates us from your presence and from your, for your will for our lives. Lord, we want to make it in the kingdom. We want others to make it in the kingdom. So forgive us, Lord, of our, our many, many sins. Lord, we're not perfect. But we your humble servants are crying out to you today letting you know oh God that we are letting go and letting God help us to reach somebody show us who to reach show us who to touch show us who to love show us who to hug show us who to encourage Guide us in the path so that no one would be lost. Save us in your kingdom, God, we pray. And we promise to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Because you are worthy of it. And we know that your promises are true. We thank you and we praise you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. 
as you find your seat. I want to read this poem to you. I have an insurance policy written in the blood of the Lamb, sealed by the cross of Jesus, redeemable wherever I am. The company will never go bankrupt. It is bonded by God's promise true. It will keep every word of its contract exactly what it says it will do. I don't have to die to collect it. No premiums do I have to pay. All I do is to keep God's promise and walk in his holy way. No collector will ever come calling. It was paid for on Calvary Street. It ensures me for living and dying and for all eternity. Thank you, Pastor Casey, for that powerful, powerful message. You know, the word says that in Galatians, I believe, or Ephesians, that salvation is by grace through faith. And when we talk about believing, that's an easy thing to repeat over and over again. But the Bible talks, of, when this Bible talks about grace through faith, it's the kind of faith that you have to exercise when you turn over everything to God. Amen. You know, and it's just like when Peter was walking on the water in the midst of the storm. That water was not calm, by the way. It was not a glassy sea. Those waves were at least three to four feet high. And there were no lights out. And it was the middle of the night. And if God were to tell you or me to walk out on that water in the middle of the night, we'd be like, wait a minute, Lord, are you sure? That water is deep and it's not still. And I can't swim. But God says, no, don't worry, I'll hold you up. Are you sure? No, no, no. Now, I commend Peter for getting out the boats, for being willing to get out the boat. Because I'd have been like, Lord, hurry up and get in the boat. But you know what? That's the kind of faith that God wants us to exercise. And you know what? Every time we give 10% or 12% or 15%, that's our way of saying, God, I trust you to pay my bills. Amen. I trust you to take care of my needs. How many of you, go, I, I challenge you to exercise that faith today. How many of you want to exercise that faith today? Raise your hand. You can do it. Now see, that's the kind of faith that's going to get us through to the kingdom. So as we lift up our tithes and offerings today, let's exercise that mustard seed faith and trust God to help it grow. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for making us co-laborers with you in this work. Lord, bless these tires and these offerings as we lift them up. Multiply it as you multiply the loaves and fishes and fed thousands. Well, Lord, we want to feed thousands not with the physical food, but with the spiritual food that endures to everlasting life. Blessed we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. It makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through. So hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test, and it won't last always. So get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready. For your miracle. Your blessing for your blessing get ready get ready for your miracle for your miracle i know you've been hurting deep down in your side let me encourage you it's gonna be all right troubles and trials come to make you strong keep on believing keep on holding on so get ready yeah get ready your blessing for your blessing get ready get ready for your miracle for your miracle get ready get ready for your blessing for your blessing get ready get ready for your miracle for your miracle you said God 
God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. He said in his words that God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. It's got my name on it. Say, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Reach up and grab it. Say, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. I receive it, yeah. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We say God's got a blessing. 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 With my name on it. With my name on it. God's got a blessing. 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 With my name on it. With my name on it. Come on and say amen. 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 We've reached the end of our service, and uh, we have a few announcements. One thing I want to remind uh, you all: next week is Youth Sabbath. Amen. 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 That's good this time. Yeah, that was good. And so next week we'll have a special day worshiping with our young people. Amen. Uh, we will follow up our day with Vespers. And then afterwards we are going to have a very special social event where we go bowling. Amen. 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 How many people want to go bowling? I want to go bowling. I'm ready. Yeah, I see some people. All right. I need to see y'all there though. And they see you there. So if you need more information about that, please see Sister Frazier or Brother Sims. Um, and we'll also have some more information in our bulletin next week about our bowling trip. I want to again invite those who would like to participate in our grief support group. We'll be meeting today after lunch. So I invite you to come to that as well as our Youth Sabbath. We're also preparing for our very special Christmas program on December 29th. Amen. 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 I want you to all be here in attendance for that as we celebrate the birth of our Lord through music and the spoken word. Amen. For, and we also have board meeting tomorrow. At 2 o'clock, so board members, please be advised that we have board meeting tomorrow. It is the second Sunday at 2 p.m. That is all for our announcements. May the peace of God be upon each and every one of you until we meet again. Okay, those of you who can, let us rise to receive the benediction. Oh, Lord, we have been truly been blessed today. We have felt the warmth of your presence, and we have been fed through the word provided through your manservant. And now, Lord, as we dismiss from this place, may we never, ever be dismissed from your presence. Give us a Sabbath day blessing, and may we share that blessing with those who don't know you. Until we meet again, oh, Lord, whether it's here or in heaven, this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. May God richly bless you.